Hello friends, this video on cell part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us first discuss cell membrane. So what is cell membrane? Now first of all cell membrane is also known as plasma membrane. So these two terms are often used interchangeably. So please do not get confused. Cell membrane and plasma membrane mean the same thing. So it is also called cell membrane and it is a thin, delicate, living outermost covering of cell. So the primary, why do we have the cell membrane? So the primary function is definitely protection because it is like a covering, it is like the boundary of your house. So why do you give a boundary to your house? Because you want to protect your house. So in a very similar way, this is also a thin covering but it is living, it is not a dead membrane. So the cells which form the, mem I mean, the boundary of the cell is also living. Now how do we define something is living and something is non-living? Something which is living will undergo the various metabolic activities. For example, respiration will happen or some of the activities will keep on happening which shows that it is living. So it provides shape to the cell. That is another important function of the cell membrane. Now, we, while we were talking about the shape of cells, I told you that different cells have different shapes. Some are spherical, some are elongated, some are spindle shaped. Some of them even change their shape. Now, who decides the shape of the cell? It is decided by the cell membrane because the way the boundary is, the way the shape of the cell will be. So, if I say that the boundary is going to be like this, then this is how the shape of the cell will be. If the boundary is like this then this is how the shape will be if the boundary is like this again the shape will be like this so boundary decides the shape of the cell it also ensures protection to the cell because of course it is the boundary so it will only allow it, it will not allow any particle to enter inside the cell it, it will selectively allow only the necessary particles to get inside the cell so we will talk about that property of cell membrane also so here, as I have mentioned before, this is the cell membrane and this cell membrane keeps each cell distinct or intact from other cells. So you see here, this cell membrane, it actually is protecting this cell, right? So it is keeping this cell separate from all these cells. So these are also cells. All of them are separated from each other due to the presence of cell membrane. So here in plant cell, this is your cell membrane or plasma membrane. It is a selectively permeable membrane. Now what do we mean by selectively permeable membrane? Permeable means something which allows substances to pass through it. That is called permeable. So if a particular wall allows particles to pass through it, then it is permeable. If it does not allow, then it is non-permeable. Now what is the meaning of selectively permeable? That means it is very selective in allowing particles to pass through it. It allows certain particles to pass through it, but it doesn't allow certain particles to pass through it. So that is why it is selectively permeable. So it is something like your security guards. So your security guards which are present in the maybe who are standing at the gate of your house they might be selectively permeable because they allow people who are your friends to enter your house but they do not allow strangers so that means they allow some people they do not allow some people so similarly plasma membrane is also selectively permeable so let us discuss the selectively permeable nature of the plasma membrane in little more detail so now what governs the movement of substances in and out of the cell because this is the boundary cell membrane is the boundary so it has to decide which particles should go out of the cell and which particles should enter the cell because it should not happen that the right particles are going out and the wrong particles are coming in so how will it decide now there are two processes which take place and with these two processes exchange of substances happen between the cell and the external environment. So one process is diffusion. What is diffusion? It is the gaseous exchange between cells as well as cell and its external environment. 
So that means whenever gaseous want to be exchanged between two cells, now there can be two scenarios, this is one cell, this is another cell. So this is the cell membrane of one cell, this is the cell membrane of another cell. So now particles might be exchanged between those two cells. That is one scenario. There is another scenario, this is one cell and the particle might get exchanged between the cell and the external environment. So who will decide whether the particle can move out or the particle can come in? So that will be decided by the cell membrane. So the process by which this exchange happens, that is called diffusion. So diffusion is applicable only for exchange of gases like oxygen or carbon dioxide, they might get exchanged between two cells or between one cell and its external environment and that process is called diffusion. Another process is osmosis which governs the exchange of water. So water exchange between cells as well as cell and its external environment. So whenever it is about movement of gases then the process is diffusion. Whenever it is about movement of water then the process is osmosis. Now what happens in diffusion and osmosis is the movement of particles whether it is gases or it is water it happens from a region of higher concentration towards a region of lower concentration that means let us suppose this is cell 1 and this is cell 2 okay now we are for now let us assume that the concentration of oxygen is high in cell 1 and the concentration of oxygen is low in cell 2. So how will the movement of oxygen take place? So oxygen will always move from region of higher concentration towards region of lower concentration. So oxygen will move from cell 1 to cell 2. So very similarly if the concentration of water is more in 1 than in 2 then movement of water will also take place from region of higher concentration to region of lower concentration. So in both these processes whether you talk about diffusion or osmosis movement takes place from region of higher concentration towards region of lower concentration. So this is the basic principle of diffusion and osmosis. So let us talk about diffusion first. Here movement of gases like carbon dioxide and oxygen from region of higher concentration towards a region of lower concentration. So let us take this example. Let us suppose this is a cell. Now, so let us consider this scenario. In the first scenario, we have just one cell. So here we will see the interaction between the cell and the surrounding. So this is cell and this is the surrounding. And here in the second scenario, we have cell 1 and cell 2. So there are two cells. Now in this case, let us suppose that if the concentration of carbon dioxide is more in the surroundings and here if the concentration is more in cell 1. So what will be the direction of movement of carbon dioxide from surroundings to cell because it moves from higher concentration towards lower concentration. Similarly in this case, so here also carbon dioxide will move from cell 1 to cell 2. So this is how diffusion takes place. In, through the cell membrane. Now let us suppose if it is vice versa, if the concentration of carbon dioxide is more inside the cell then it will move out to the surroundings. Here also if it is more in cell 2 then it will move from cell 2 to cell 1. Let us now talk in a similar way about osmosis. So it is going to be the same concept just that instead of gases here we have water. So here movement of water will take place from a region of higher concentration towards a region of lower one. So again the same thing you have a cell here and here you have cell 1 and cell 2. If the concentration of water is more outside then if the movement will take place from outside to inside. So in this case what will happen? The cell will swell up because more water is entering inside the cell. So it will start swelling up. In this case what will happen? Cell 1 will start shrinking and cell 2 will start swelling up. But if it is just the opposite that is if we say that the concentration is more inside the cell or in cell 2 then water will start moving out of the cell here and water will move from cell 2 to cell 1. So whichever cell is gaining water will swell up and whichever cell is losing water will shrink. So with these concepts in mind let us see the
the behavior of a cell with different types of solution. So let us suppose if the cell is put, put in a solution which is a hypotonic solution. What do we mean by hypotonic solution? That means the concentration of water. It means water concentration in the solution is higher. So that means inside the cell water concentration is less. So let us suppose this is the hypotonic solution where water concentration is more and this is the cell. So water concentration is more in this case where water concentration is more outside. So that means water will move from outside to inside. As a result the cell will start swelling up. So whenever a cell is put in a hypotonic solution what happens to the cell? The cell swells up. Similarly, if it is just the opposite, that is if you put it in hypertonic solution, that means a solution where water concentration is less than that inside the cell. Now hypo, hypo means less, hyper means more. So hypertonic solution means water concentration is more inside the cell. Okay. So here if you see in this case what will happen? So here the concentration is less. So that means water will move from inside to outside. So in this case the cell will gradually shrink because the cell is losing water. So this is how it will behave. Now if we take an isotonic solution, iso means same. That means the concentration of water in the solution is same as the concentration of water in the cell. So both sides the concentration is the same. So in this case there will be no movement at all. So water will neither move outside nor it will enter inside. So the cell will remain as it is. There will be no swelling or shrinkage. So based on this uh, we got to know that plasma membrane or cell membrane performs two important functions. One is it provides shape to the cell. Second it allows certain particles only to pass through it. Now let us look at the structure of plasma membrane. What is the plasma membrane made up of? Well, it is made up of lipids and proteins. Now you might ask what are lipids? Lipids are organic substances that is carbon containing substances which are insoluble in water. So lipids are, you can think them a little similar to fats. Because fats are also insoluble in water, so lipids are also insoluble in water. So lipids and proteins, they are uh, the constituents of the plasma membrane. So it can be seen through an electron microscope. So you really need a powerful microscope to look at the structure of the plasma membrane. So here you see this orange colored boundary is the plasma membrane. But when you look at it through an electron microscope, you can actually see that it contains two layers of lipids. So this thin line which we normally see is not a thin line actually, it has two layers of lipids. So when you see it with a very powerful microscope only then you will be able to see. So because of this it is called to have a lipid bilayer structure because it has two layers of lipids. And then where are the proteins located? The proteins are embedded in these lipid layers. So let us quickly look at the lipid bilayer structure. So this is how it will look like. This is one layer of lipid. This is one layer of lipid. So these are the two layers of lipids. So these are lipids. Now I, I do not want to get into the detail of the lipid bilayer structure because you will study all these in your higher classes. But in case you are inquisitive about it, you can refer to the videos of cell of class 11. So these are the two layers of lipid and the protein molecules are embedded somewhere here. So the protein molecules will be embedded in this bilayer structure. So this is a continuous bilayer of lipid molecules and this is why it is also known as the fluid mosaic structure. So that is also another name of this model. It is also called fluid mosaic structure. Now here I think this much of information is enough about cell membrane. The rest of the details we will discuss in higher classes. So proteins are embedded in continuous bilayer of lipid molecules as I said just now. So these are two layers of lipids and these structures are the proteins. 
Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.